Hey guys, Mike here. So today we're pouring a concrete slab with an electric heating mat in it. That's what all those red wires are for. They're gonna heat the slab up and melt snow and ice. So it's 12 by nine. We've got about two and a half yards of 4,000 PSI concrete. We're gonna get going here in a second. So we're just getting ready. We'll talk about the heat mat a little bit later, but just wanted to show you guys here what we're doing. So what makes this a $20,000 slab? Well, I'll tell you here. I'll give you a little background on the story. So first, I was contacted by the architect who built this house. And they're the ones that hired us to come in here and do this slab. Now, all we were hired to do was pour and finish the concrete. Uh, when they contacted us, they said they would do all the prep work. There was an existing slab here that was all, I guess, salt damage from throwing de-icing salts on this. So they busted that out and they came in and they put down the styrofoam, they put up the forms, they put up the ISO strip up against the wall, and then they hired uh, this company, which I'll have at the end of the video, I'll have a little contact information on the heating company, the, the company that provided the heating mat. They hired them to come in and install the heating mat, you know, and, and tie it to the wire mesh. And then now we're here pouring the concrete. So our part like my part in here is again like i said i the labor to pour and finish the concrete and i supply the concrete so my part was three thousand dollars out of that 20. and then when i asked the the people the architect people that contacted me uh, they have a person on site here with us when i asked her you know just what does something like this cost she's the one that told me it's a twenty thousand dollar slab and that the heating part of this was fifteen thousand dollars just for the heating part of it now i know it's it's much more than just the the red line that goes in the slab you know there's a there's a sensor and, and there's, there's some other stuff that goes along with it but so that makes up you know that makes up about eighteen thousand dollars of the slab then probably the architect tacked on a little bit of money there on the end to get it up to 20 but that's what made up the bulk of the cost of this slab was just heating it like that I had no idea that heating a slab like this would cost that much um, you know if I would have guessed I would have said you know I don't know two or three thousand dollars to add heat to something like this so anyway so we're here today just to pour and finish and we're right in the city so there's no place there's no place that the, the access was kind of tough in here. The driveway was kind of small. Um, there's no place to wash suits. I mean, it's all it's all finished landscaping. We had one little tiny area, about two feet by three feet. We could actually like take the shoots off and, and kind of rinse them in this area, and then we would have to clean up the mess after. So we're in kind of a tough spot too. Now this is this is kind of connection between the house and the garage. The garage is on the right, house is on the left, and there is there is a partial roof over this too. So I guess it does see quite a bit of weather in the winter. And what we're trying to do is, you know, we're trying to get it to slope all towards kind of like where the concrete truck is, that part of the driveway. The driveway has pretty good slope away from the garage. So as we're pouring this, you know, I got the laser set up. I'm trying to get it all to slope to that one side. And I got a door to match that's going into the garage. And then obviously another door to match on the left that goes into the house. And we don't really want, you know, a step up transition off that. We want kind of a smooth transition into both places. So we're kind of dealing with that as we're going. And we're using a really high PSI concrete. Um, and we want to get this to set up so the, the customer is not without their entry you know, for an extended period of time. So got just a little bit of uh, NCA non-chloride liquid accelerator in it to get it to set up a little bit on us. We can get a good boom finish on it. And then the homeowners can put this right back into service here without waiting too long. So what we're going to do is, you know, we'll get it screeded. We'll get it all sloping towards that right hand back corner of the driveway. And then we're going to put a, we'll show you how we, we mag this out, get a nice broom finish on it. And then there's a there's also a little plaque we're going to put in this that just that just tells that hey this mat this concrete has an electrical uh, wires inside the slab itself so people will know you know later on down the road in case someone does something to break this out or change the entryway at all down the road they won't bust into that electrical system but right now we got to get you know we're trying to get the concrete as close as we possibly can without any leftover because <laughs> we don't have any place to put the leftover 
other than we could just throw it on that plastic we got on the driveway. So we scraped the chutes down really, really good. We're trying to keep the splatters off the house. We got, you know, it, uh, it covered it with plastic pretty good. And it was kind of windy, so we were, we were fighting the wind a little bit there. And now we're trying to figure out, okay, where can we get this concrete truck so we can wash the chutes down? I'm saying, well, probably right here is the only spot in this one little tiny area where there's a little bit of crushed rock. And then I said, we'll have to, we'll have to pick up the mess, put it in a wheelbarrow, I guess, and get rid of it afterwards. So Darren's finishing screeding in there. He's just trying to make sure the edges are all nice and clean and tight. And then you can see I'm here bull floating. And I've got to go over this multiple times because it's it's setting up pretty good on us right now. It's a it's like a 45, 4,000 or 4,500 PSI mix. I can't remember exactly, but it's a, it's a really high PSI mix. And it was really creamy. I mean, it had a lot of cream and paste to it. It's just a matter of going over it and getting it nice and smooth to get it ready for the broom. Now we always we always hand finish before we broom, and in Maine. All right, so they got this little plaque they want me to put in. It just says there's a heating coil in there, so I'm going to embed it. Just set it down in. I'll embed it down in this corner, and then everybody will know from now on that there's an uh, electric heat mat in this slab, so they don't just bust it out for some reason 20 years from now without not knowing. Yeah, like I said, um, they had two plaques there, but I only they only uh, had me put one in. Like I said, in Maine, you know, when we when we finish exterior concrete in Maine that has air entrainment in it, air entrainment is just these tiny microscopic bubbles they they inject into the concrete to help with freeze and thaw. Uh, so when water when water gets soaked into the concrete and freezes, it expands, and the tiny air bubbles gives give space inside the concrete for that water to freeze and expand without damaging the concrete so when we finish concrete with air entrainment in it we typically don't like to steel trowel the surface sometimes that'll seal the surface off and it'll it'll cause uh, it'll cause either the moisture that's trying to escape right now and, and a little bit of the air escapes too as we finish sometimes it'll cause that to get trapped right under the surface because you seal it off with that smooth steel trowel finish and it, it'll create blisters and bubbles is what we've found. So we typically just, you know, just mag float the surface to help keep the surface a little more open as we finish exterior concrete. Now I'm going, I'm cutting the edges in with an edger right now, trying to round the edges off. And we'll go around and do that. We, we usually do that on all our exterior concrete finishes. Um, and then as this sets up, it's setting up pretty good on us right now. You know, I'll, I'll grab my skids, my, my uh, stainless steel skids, and I can get on this and start mag floating it out and getting it ready for a broom finish. You know, and you can see the, the concrete truck's still there washing down, so they really, really didn't have any time to, to hang out and wait for the concrete to set up. It was setting up pretty good on us, which is good. We like that. So now the concrete truck's gone. It's probably been I uh, probably 15 or 20 minutes after I got the edges cut in, and I'm checking I'm checking to see how firm things are are getting right now, and they're firming up pretty good. So I'll just reach out with my mag and and get a little bit on the edge with my mag, and then I'll then I can put my skids on here and really start getting this thing magged out. I got to match that doorway, like I said, so I, I want to make sure that's perfect. I don't want the concrete to be higher than the door sill right there, but I want it to be just about flush with it, maybe down an eighth of an inch on it. And then I want to make sure all my edges are filled in really, really good. The concrete was really creamy. You know, you can see it when I pushed my mag, I had some paste and some cream there to work with, which actually makes it makes it almost too creamy to, to broom right after I mag it this first time. You know, I want that I want that cream and that paste to, to firm up a little bit to give it a really nice broom finish. Otherwise, if I broom it right now, it's going to be a little bit rougher than I want it to be. Um, no kidding. Just going around that plaque, cleaning that plaque off a little bit, making sure the edges are all nice and tight on that plaque. 
And then I'm coming down that side by the house, making sure all the edges are filled in really, really nice. We don't want any gaps. We don't want any little rock holes. We want the transition from the, the new concrete into the, you know, that ISO strip foam to look really, really nice. So this is basically the first part of the finishing process is just getting it magged out like this and then deciding, well, is the concrete tight enough to broom right now or should we let it set up a little bit more and, you know, mag it out again again keeping the surface open so we don't seal off the surface and get any air trapped underneath the surface or any moisture trapped under the surface that's that's kind of uh, escaping out the surface right now so we gave it we probably gave it 20 30 minutes right there and then we'll come back we'll touch up the edges and I'm going to get back on it. I'm just going to mag it out again. It's going to be it's going to be a lot drier on the surface, a lot tighter on the surface, but still moist enough to get a good mag, good tight mag float on it is what I call it. So Luke, you'll see Luke here in a minute so he can drag that broom across it and those broom marks look really really nice and neat and even. I got a little hand broom with me because there's some overhangs on those edges a little bit and then up against the doors you know I want to get that pre broomed with the little broom so when we drag the the two foot broom across you know we don't have to worry about stopping and starting or maybe bumping into the door sill there Luke can just have it one nice even pull across the surface of the slab and that just makes it easier for him right there if I get those two or three inches right up against the building broom first You can see how much tighter that is now. There's no, there's no paste left over after I mag. You know, on the right and the left when I go, it's everything's really, really firmed up good. It's really tight. And if you live in states where you don't get freeze and thaw, you don't use air entrainment. I mean, this is where you'd be using a hand trial, a steel trial right here, to steel trial the surface really, really smooth before you pull the broom over it. But it's basically, you know, very similar. We've just found. Magging it twice here in Maine works better in the long run. So, you know, we don't see any surface damage down the road. Now, it should help having the heat in there. You know, these guys are going to warm the slab up to whatever it takes to melt any snow and ice. So they don't have to use de-icing here. Um, that should help prolong the life of the slab as far as these winters are concerned. Because we have winter in Maine from... Boy, we get freezing temps starting in November, and they last all the way into March pretty easily. So a good five months, this will see freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing over and over again. Yeah, I'm just going to work my way right off, and then Luke can, Luke can finish up with the broom. I believe that was about... 12 feet from one end to the other so a couple each handle is about six feet so he can reach out there pretty easy that broom's not too heavy that's why we use the two footer instead of the three footer or the four footer it's easy to set down with just one guy like that and then as we're brooming you know we're just looking how does that look does it look pretty good is it a nice tight even broom finish um, if we're not rolling any surface rocks or anything like that and we know we're good if we are then we know we want to set it up set let it set up a little bit more and we'll go over it again we'll mag float it again what, the other one there? Yeah. Darren's just touching up any little parts on the edge we want to get touched up and that's it it didn't take too many passes with the broom really to finish this as you can see it's pretty small but you know what we're talking about is let's make sure we're really tight on that and I'm asking I'm asking the woman this is the person we're working for from the architectural firm what do you want to do with these edges do you want us to leave a finished edge with the with the with the edger mark or do you want to leave it just rounded with the broom like this more like industrial looking which is kind of what the architecture of the house is like so Darren you know Darren did end up showing her and she decided no let's just leave it let's just leave it rounded but broomed and you know simple easy 
without the picture frame type look and that so that's how we left it and Luke's just going over that one other part up by the house because when we broomed it the first time the broom was kind of dry and it, when it's dry it leaves a few little like what I call it, like balls concrete balls left behind and even though those do get pushed off um, later on after it dries it just looks better this way all right so as far as the electric mat goes there's going to be like a snowflake detector right over here so when it starts snowing it'll turn the system on and so the system comes on it'll heat up the concrete melt the snow and ice and then there's a thermostat in there that'll detect the internal temperature of the concrete so you can set that to okay i want the concrete to get up to 50 degrees and then once it gets up to 50 degrees i want the system to shut down and once it gets drops below 50 it turns back on so the the system doesn't have to always be on in case it's snowing for a long long time it's just going to get the concrete up to enough heat to melt snow and ice and then that'll just keep going back and forth depending on how long the storm is so that's basically how that's going to work um, again it's got to be about in the middle of the slab you can see how close the coils were and that's it so they got a heated concrete slab it's going to melt snow and ice don't ever have to use de-icing salts and you know won't get any damage to the surface of the concrete because of that so all right so here's just a little information on the company <clears throat> on the brand of the electrical system that was in the concrete if you want to check out their website you know they got a, they got some information on there you can go check out so you can just use this to check them out well thanks for watching guys we'll see you on the next one